Greetings, I, the War Owl, greets you, and welcome to another episode of Matchmaking Academy, where you are the star for all the wrong reasons, but don't worry, we're going to figure out what those reasons are and help you improve at Counter-Strike Global Defensive. Our hero today is Raven. He's a legendary eagle player. That's here. And his favorite fish is salmon. You cannot go wrong with salmon. Salmon is like the fish's fish, you know? I don't think there's anybody that don't like salmon. I'm not sure what his, his throws are going on here. Anyway, he had some very specific questions about how to play Palace on Mirage. Now, keep in mind this player, very brave sending in this demo so we can silently judge him. No, actually, so we can improve at the game. So make sure you don't write any disparaging comments insulting his skill and say, oh, this guy's an eagle, but he shouldn't be an eagle, or anything like that. You gotta be respectful to your fellow Counter-Strike player. We are what a noob! So let's go through this step by step and figure out what went wrong. We see the scenario right now where we have one player inside of the connector, uh, one player back here at CT, and the T's have snuck a player through into jungle, and Raven has taken this position on Tetris. So the idea is they need to set up a crossfire for this player. And while that's happening, instead of jumping over, focusing on uh, Nimble Fox over here. What happens is, as they're setting up that crossfire, Nimble Fox gets taken down. You now only have one player left inside of the connector. It makes sense to just let him attack you. Uh, what we see here is once Caspa decides to push uh, through this position, he engages... 0 2 4 and at that point Raven jumps over and engages him So it's a good idea to engage right after your teammate has died because you're going for the trade You can see the very advantageous position that Raven is in right now in that that player is his, det his attention is divided He's already shot so his accuracy is down. This is a perfect opportunity to kill the player. He just messes up on the shooting his spray control was all over the place. One thing you have to consider is that once you jump, you're going to get a lot of inaccuracy for a short period of time. You jump and land, and you won't be able to shoot for like a little bit. You have to give it a little bit of time before you start, start, uh, start shooting again. Now, one thing also that he was doing is he wasn't like holding the angle or anything. He pushed out a little bit far and a little bit wide to try and engage, and we saw that the CT could use this area right here as cover as he uh, tried to kill him. So he could have even ducked. Casper could have ducked down and wouldn't have been visible from this player uh, in, in order to like regain his composure in order to engage. So yeah, I would say one thing is this player maybe should have played a little bit more passive. Um, this player played a little bit more passive. Well, you only have one player left and you can just set up a crossfire and force Casper to push. So there really wasn't that much wrong there. Let's hop over and check out another question that he had. So this round is like how to play Palace when your teammates are taking A. One thing we notice, he does this little jumping thing and pushes down here very aggressively, and he peeks the corner very wide. We'll talk about that when we hop in game. Then he pushes out through this smoke and takes this position. This is fine, he's checking the right side. He's giving cover to his, uh, to his teammates. What you wanna do when you play Palace is sort of be a support player for your guys moving in lower so they can get position into the site. That flash actually ended up flashing his teammate. Uh, that smoke, I don't think that was a good smoke to throw. He's trying to smoke off the stair position, but the reason I say it's not good because he had to peek to throw it. A good smoke is one that you can throw without actually looking at where the enemies are. So he could have gotten picked there if Homer Luck was watching that properly. He could have easily gotten picked in that position. So he throws the smoke down, and then again he's going to wide peek it quite heavily. And we're going to hop in game and talk a little bit about how to play Palace. I'm a terrorist, and I want to help my teammates push out A from Palace. So the palace position, it makes sense. We saw um, this guy sort of jump out and do this little bunny hop thing around the side and then kind of peek this really heavily here. This is dangerous because this is a position where CTs will peek in here every once in a while to try to pick a player. So a lot of players will move in here. Not uh, JW would hop in like, I'm JW, woohoo, and somehow kill the guy. But anyway, you're not JW. You move in here very slowly, walk it so they don't know you're in position, and then you can just hold this, you can hold this angle right here in case they try to push. You have a lot of time. The CTs, generally, are going to be smoking off either A main, probably A main since it's easier in matchmaking, or they're going to smoke off palace. So if they smoke off the palace position, really, um, all you can do at that point is just kind of walk up and watch the smoke and make sure nobody pushes through it. But if they smoke down here at A main, which is probably more likely in matchmaking, even though I actually like it when you smoke palace more, um, then you can actually play this position but you don't have to push it too quickly because your teammates who are gonna push into A, they're chilling down there at A main. They can't do anything. So you have time to just hold this angle and take your time in case they try to push you and take a better position in here, setting up to push into the site. So right, as you get to this position, your job is to help your teammates out pushing in. So you can actually flash it. You can flash down here. 
you can flash out like that. Um, just make sure you don't flash your own teammates who are at Tetris. It's very easy to flash the Tetris people, but if you kind of throw it out way over there, it won't flash the Tetris people, but it'll still get CT, a little bit of the sight, and that sort of a thing. Um, now, I want you to watch this. The reason I have an op down here is I want you to see this from the opper's perspective. As the opper's playing middle, he's going to be watching this position. He's like, oh, they're taking A. He rotates over here to watch Palace. His first thing is to watch Palace. Look at this tiny little pixel spot he has to deal with. His job is really to get intel of you. And if you try to peek him, he can get you easily. And what we saw there in that situation was our guy peek it like this. He peeked out here. Look at all these little angles you're visible from. It's really wide to just walk right out here. And it's not very smart. So one thing he can do is just kind of like bait out the op shot. It'll go like boom right by him or he'll see if the player is there just very quickly like this and try not to get hit. You can see it's very difficult to hit that player. If you try to go for the pick, you're probably going to die. You're not going to be able to get that. That's like a pixel perfect shot. So you want to either just like run, run by like that to watch this angle and they'll shoot and miss and then you'll get intel and tell your teammates what's going on um, or just like shoulder peek it and then focus on these other positions like there. You only want to do one at a time. So as he, he ran by because there was like a smoke down, and that smoke is actually very helpful for a terrorist. So he can clear this position, make sure nobody is up top. Um, he can throw flashes from here, and he can support his teammates. He can watch here, and then like very, e just one little spot at a time. Like that's a little headshot position. You do like that. Next spot right there. All of this without engaging that opper. You don't want to engage that opper. So we saw that he also had a smoke on him, and he tried to smoke, throw the smoke down there. That's, that's kind of silly. Your terrorist buddies can throw the smoke way easier. So there's two, ma two main ways to smoke off Mirage. Here's the, fir the first one. This is really easy. That smoke is the one that he threw. I've shown this a million times, but it should be really easy, and everybody should know how to do these. And the companion smoke to that is up here. You should always keep a player watching door in case they try to push to deal with this. Um, just look at this little crack. Move up right in the middle. And that one blocks off this position. And if these are blocked off, those are really the only smokes that you need uh, to push into the site. This guy doesn't have to worry about these two positions now. He can look at Sandwich, peek in here. He can even help like down here and even kill the players inside of the site. A lot of times the player will play like behind this box. He can focus on that player. This guy's got to divide his attention then. So you got to worry about him as well. And then he can move out and even look down into CT. And this is a nice spot to watch CT and all these positions. You can really help your teammates a lot if those smokes are down. Now there's an alternate way to smoke it. I'll show you the first smoke. Uh, I'm trying to remember it. This isn't one that's used as often. So right by this post, um, look at that, look at that. I think this is it. This is supposed to smoke off in between these two boxes. There it is. And the companion smoke to that is one that you can throw from Palace. So this is something you actually have to do. You get to help your team. Go over to this crack right here. Uh, see this crack on the wall? Look at the left side of it and throw it. If it bounces twice, it works. There it goes. And this one blocks off this position. But be very careful, because if you miss it a little bit, there's all, and you can't do it perfectly, you can look under here. And by the way, if you're playing CT, look out for this smoke. If it happens, you can look under it a little bit and see the foot come by, and then uh, spray them through the smoke. So you still have to worry about that. Maybe you can try to flash that player out as well. But once you've split that site in half like that, then you can focus on these guys over here. So, like getting intel of the, the that player moving by, and once you tell your teammates where they are, these guys will be moving forward, they'll be flashing it, they'll be doing, that was a terrible flash, they'll be doing all kinds of stuff, and they'll be moving out here and trying to pick these players, because this whole area will be open, this will be cut off, and they'll be focusing on them. So you've sort of divided the attention, and your job is just sort of play support and get intel about what's going on. If you try to engage like that, a lot of times you're going to be going down. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Oh, the other thing, he sort of ran by... Um, one thing you can do once you run by is throw your own smoke down here. So you can throw it out a little bit. Uh, I went over the side! Uh, there we go. Alright, that one's fine. See, if you move out here, you can now actually creep out and not be affected and get all the way by. And the, uh, that player is not going to be able to kill you through this position. You can even hop down here if you want. Now you're inside of the site. So you can throw that smoke down instead of the one that blocked off that position. That really should be a smoke that your teammates throw because it's real easy to do. And from this position, you need that smoke to either smoke yourself out here or to um, do that alternate smoke we showed. All right, I hope you learned something. Woohoo! <laughs> I did that. <laughs> it was like a one take, man. It was like, uh, it was like, um, uh, what was that movie? We're screwing up the one take. Oh no! Oh no, I don't want to do it again. I don't want to do it again. I forgot the movie name. Oh my gosh. When they go into the. The restaurant with the mobsters. Oh.
By the way, this was one of those demos that people send in just to try to show off how they play. The player ends up top fragging the game and winning it. And I'm really sick of getting these types of demos. I've been tricked and I've lost tons of time making videos and looking into these demos and doing content when people are just sending in stuff to try to brag about their skill. That's not what I'm interested in this series. I'm looking for people who sincerely want to get some kind of tips and improve. However, I didn't just throw away this episode as a result of it because I already had recorded a lot of it. I, I've done this before and I've just thrown them away because I've been just so disgusted with it. So I, I'm, I'm sick of getting insincere demos and that's one of the reasons this series doesn't come out more often because I have so much trouble wading through all of the very insincere demos. So please, guys, only send in demos if you actually want to get some kind of tips and want to try to, instead of you just trying to trick me. I'm sick of it. Thank you both very much for watching, I'm the War Al, and I still have no closer. Fellas!